Welcome friends. I'm going to show you how to sew reusable incontinence underwear for men and boys from a purchased pair of underwear. This style is for fecal incontinence, aka poop smears, and is not for urinary incontinence. These underwear should be fully machine washable. The materials we're going to need are men's boxer briefs, polyurethane laminate fabric, also known as PUL, cotton flannel, tracing paper and a pencil, a rotary cutter and cutting mat, and then sewing machine, thread, needles, all the rest of your normal sewing equipment. Okay, to start, I'm going to use a pair of boxer briefs. These are just ones that I bought from Target. And the first step is to actually trace the back where the pad is going to sit. So I used, I used tracing paper, and on these, I wasn't interested in going all the way up to the waist, but you, you can if you want. And I'm using actually the seam line roughly as a guide. And you can see I used tracing paper and just traced the exact outline. And I did want it to wrap a little bit around to the front just for comfort sakes and for um, sanitation so that there's not just an abrupt ending right in the middle of the line. So I trace that onto a piece of tracing paper. And then the next step will be to actually add and subtract some seam allowance. So from here, I actually made two copies using this. The first one, I added a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. So I use, in order to do that, I use my, um, I, I use this ruler. It, you could use a quilting ruler. This one's nice because it has 1 8 inch markings on it. So you can pretend to have paper underneath here. You can lay it down you can see through it and you can line it up to mark your quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the outside cut it out so this outside that's a quarter inch larger will be the top and the bottom of the pad and then I did the same thing except I traced it 3 8 inch smaller for an extra level of extra layer of lining on the inside of the pad then the next thing we want to do is to cut out the layers. So I am using scraps of flannel and the, I'm never sure how to pronounce it, PUL, the polyurethane, um, like baby diaper fabric. So let's, I'm going to show you first this is scrap flannel that I have laying left over from, obviously, from another project. Um, because you're not going to see it, I'm just going to find spots that are just big enough to cut out my pieces. So I, for, for this, I don't need a lot of absorbency. So this is my pad piece. I'm going to want one pad layer and then one top out of flannel. And I'm going to try to use as much as I can here. So I, this is not the most precise method of cutting out, but honestly, it's one of my favorite ways to do this. Um, these are just giant washers from the hardware store. I use them as pattern weights. There's lots of fancy things you can use instead. That and a rotary cutter. And I could be much more precise on these corners. But again, this is going to be sewn inside. You won't even see it. So I'm just cutting around the outside edge. Just watch your fingers. rotary cutter in between, cut all the way through because I missed a couple threads that seems to happen. I think I have a rough spot on this cutter. So catch that last little thread. All right, so for each one, I'll need one of the interior lining pads. Set that aside. I'll need a slightly bigger spot because I need to cut an inside piece. And what do I have left? Okay, actually made good good use of some of these little bits. Uh, so this is a great way to use up scraps. Um, here. Looks like I'm actually ready to cut another one. Now you could actually do, you know, two or more at once. Fold the fabric in half. You can measure up your grain lines. I don't think the grain lines are super um, helpful in this case. I am trying to keep the, this is the center back and this the crossway stretch the flannel especially has a little bit of stretch on the crossways green. 
which given that the underwear themselves are pretty stretchy, I do need to move on the body. That seems likely we want to organize that. I could cut the whole thing on the bias because you're using up scraps. Honestly, I think it would also work. Um, so here, I'm just going to cut this out as well. Threads. There we go. There's threads, threads. There's another one. Okay. Alright. Now the last piece that I'll need is the waterproof layer. Let's put this aside. Um, and I have some of this uh, polyurethane lined fabric. Mine apparently has some cat fur on it. Apparently it has some help. Um, I have a kitty cat who likes to come and hang out in my fabric scraps. But So now I'm going to try to find a spot on this that also has enough fabric. Again, these are kind of odd shapes, so I'm not too worried about laying it out. I do want to pay attention to the stretch on this way. That's got more stretch than which way is cross and which way is just, Um. Maybe I want to go this way on this piece. Same process as before, lay it out in a single, single layer. This is the outside piece, not the pad. Um, so and on this fabric there is a like a waterproof kind of a vinyl sort of layer. And this side feels more like fabric. Doesn't matter while you're cutting, but when I sew it together I'm going to have this vinyl sticky side hidden inside the layers of flannel so it won't be up against the underwear. Um, and I think it could be, I think it probably could work both ways. But this is the way it seemed to work best in previous attempts. So same thing here, I'm just going to cut all the way around the outside edges. Although I did mark that, that's that center crotch seam, I did mark that in case I wanted to help use that when I align it later. But I'm not going to bother marking that on the fabric because it's just not that complicated of a stitching pattern. And I don't need any notches. These are these are symmetrical. I did when I when I traced mine. I did end up then just kind of checking, folding it in half, and making it symmetrical. So I don't have to worry about left versus right side. The underwear should be symmetrical. Also, All right. So. That's the cutting. Next up is the construction. Okay, now for the construction. I have three pieces that I've cut out. I have the inner liner. I have, this is the side that will be against the skin. And then I have my waterproof piece. So to start, I'm gonna sew the pad onto the liner. Now I want it to be inside once it's finished. So I'm actually just gonna center it in the middle now. Sorry for bumping the camera. I need, um, no, I didn't even, this is, again, doesn't have to be super exact. I just want to have, make sure I have enough space around the outside edges to turn this right side out. So this gets me two layers of flannel. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to stitch around the outside edges of this and then one or two lines down the middle. Um, you can mark these if that helps. I didn't think that was necessary for, for what I'm doing now. Uh, what I have in the machine, I have just a regular needle. Um, if you're having trouble later on with this, you can try a stretch needle or um, possibly a Teflon one if you're having trouble with it sticking. But when I've done these before, I've done fine with just this. This is actually a relatively old quilting needle. Um, probably needs to be changed, but it seems to be making through these layers just fine. So I have one on, have on my walking foot. I'm going to start with a straight stitch. I'm going to start with just a plain straight stitch and on my stitch on the edge, I'm going to stitch about an eighth of an inch in. I'm not going to worry about covering the raw edge because it will be inside the finished piece. So, lining it up to 
to where it's where I'm starting approximately on the edge and then I'm just going to fall eyeball it should end with the thread down we'll start with a stitch in the corner make sure I've set my machine and needle down for when I get to the corners that'll help me turn from the edge. I'm going to pivot, um, stop the needle down and then pivot. Note I am using a walking foot. I, I did have done these before with just a normal zigzag foot on the machine. Uh, the walking foot does help when you go to attach it to the underwear um, because of all the layers you end up with at that point. I'll show you that in a minute. Stitch across the bottom. Down the other side. add a couple of lines down the middle just to help kind of keep it in place when it's being worn and keep it from bunching up in the wash. So I'm just going to stitch back down. I'm just going to eyeball this part again. You could dry it out and make it super neat. I think about there is good. And from here I'm just going to follow that curve down to this bottom. a little bit to about here and then repeat that on the way up. the button to that will cause my machine to do an automatic locking stitch which will help when I go to trim the threads trim it off and so trim up my threads this is what it looks like on the front mine produces the threads have two little thread tails on the cutoffs they're not bothering any skin um see if you can see that very well let me see if I can adjust the light a little bit better. There we go. Um, so, um, again, if you were making um, period underwear, you would probably have more layers than this, but this isn't really a high absorbency issue. This one is more about, it's really more about the, the waterproof, absorbing just enough to stay waterproof. Okay, so on this, this is my waterproof fabric. It's got like a shiny vinyl side that I want to be inside the pad when it's done, and this fabric-y side I want to be on the outside. So I'm going to lay these two pieces right sides together, so fabric side to the top of my flannel. Um, and I'm going to end up stitching all around the outside edges. This one will um, just a little bit as it goes because it's a stretchy fabric. So I'm just going to use a couple clips to hold it in place so I can get it, keep it from stretching too that far out of shape on each corner basically. Oh, so got a little twisted there. And that's for this, that's really all I need. That fabric, that flannel doesn't really move too much. It it stays in place now. This is set up for a quarter inch seam allowance. But you can see on my machine, I have this diagonal seam tape that gives me kind of a long quarter inch for when I'm quilting. Um, and it sort of lines up with there's like a little kind of spot on my foot. 
So I'm going to actually stitch. I'm going to leave a, an opening to turn. So I'm going to start here, stitch around the outside to there, and then we'll turn it inside out. Wrench. I can take this out. Again, it should start with a locking stitch because that's the setting that I'm on. in my corners and turn this right side out. I want to cut these corners um, close but not through that stitching. That'll help with the turning. out with a chopstick. Yeah. At this point you can see we are very close to done. This is a super super fast project and it's so much nicer than using a full-on depends or attempting to stick a, a lady's um, maxi pad any type of bow into it. it doesn't does not work out very well. So at this point, um, I need to close this end and I'm going to actually do this fairly simple method. I'm just going to fold these ends in and I'm going to top stitch across the top. You could stitch all the way around the outside edge, but these two side seams are actually going to be stitched down in just a minute straight into the underwear, so I'm not too concerned about those. Again, this I just kind of want to finger press this into place so that I catch it, so we don't have any raw seams that will come apart in the wash later on. You can stick a little clip on that if it's, if it's being difficult. Make sure I've got my seams all nicely rolled out. I think that looks good. Like I mentioned before, the thread that I chose is nothing special. This is just basic polyester sewing thread. Don't need anything fancy and not your 100% cotton quilting thread or anything exciting like that. Um, this be able to use with all your synthetic with no trouble so okay you notice how it is getting a little hung up on this part um, so just watch it as it goes through make sure it feeds through okay just, oh. no no I'm getting that thick seam is getting a little hung up at the end Let's see if I can get my There we go. Now it's feeding. Sometimes at the start and the stop with this kind of thick fabric, it either needs to be helped along or you need a little extra bit of fabric as kind of a jumper. Zigzag. Let's see if I 
Here's that new pair of briefs. Now this is probably the worst part is getting these guys lined up and pinned in place. So I'm going to turn it inside out. I'm going to use the some pins in this case because I can't use clips. And remember I had a little bit of extra seam that should go up to the front. Now we want this guy flannel side in. So this is the inside of the underwear. So I'm going to line that up across. And I think you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to put a pin in each corner. And try not to go through two layers of fabric. Make sure you're only going through the one. Now let's, let's just sew it down. We're actually just going to follow these seams. So our stitching should actually be hidden in the seam that's already there, which is nice, nice and uh, unobtrusive. And you can, you could match your thread. I've got black thread and these are black and, and blue, but so I don't think it'll be seen. White thread might show up. So you can, you know, try to find something that blends. All right. So now as you stitch this, be careful that you keep the legs out of the way. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to zigzag, starting at one corner, down the seam, all the way down to the front, tie it off, and then repeat on that side. So it'll actually be open that through the middle. I'm not going to stitch it down top and bottom, because um, I think it'll help it move a little better and not distort things. Um, so we're going to get this guy underneath the foot pedal. This is the other place where this might actually need a little helper, because there's a... Now, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, the foot's kind of tilted backward because of how thick this is in the front. So I'm actually going to add something behind to kind of beef it up. This is my little test piece of fabric that I was testing stitches on. I'm just going to fold this up and just kind of make a little, a little ledge. And this part is not going to be sewn in at all. I'm just going to leave a little behind. It's just going to help even out my presser foot. So even with the... Uh, even with the walking foot on, it still needs a little help. So, just like that. And yes, I still have a pin in place. Now that it's done, make sure there's no extra leg fabric tied in underneath. And if not, we're all clear. So now I'm actually going to pin my needle back to where it's not in the way of... Pin back to where it's not in the way of the needle. Start stitching. Start with a knot until it does about three stitches. See how it just starts and didn't hesitate. Pull that pin halfway. And we're just gonna follow that seam allowance all the way down. And I'm not stretching or distorting as I go. And I'm just trying to keep just trying to keep that zigzag more or less on top of that original seam allowance. So I do have a pin here. I'm going to pull it back a little bit so it's out of the way. I might actually be able to leave it in place. So sew my last few stitches. Let's see. Just be careful to make sure that, need, that pin doesn't get in the back of the needle. Alright, that's a good spot. I'm going to stop and tie it off. my little scrap again. That's my little ledge. Going out. This is fiddly. This might be easier with a, a larger pair, but you know. Back here. Pull this pin so it's not too far in, but it's still helping hold things together while I get everything adjusted. Okay, just put a bit tight in this. 
spot. Again, that little scrap isn't going to be sewn in at all. It's just there to prop up the back side of the presser foot to keep it from tilting too badly and let it start sort of stitching into it. I'm actually going to need four more. Okay. Oh, looking good. Now I have to fabric under the presser foot to get this pin out of the way. And away we go. So there we have it. So from the outside, totally invisible. Looks like a regular pair of boys' shorts, right? Nothing to be seen. Nice and discreet. From the inside, there is a nice dark colored pad all attached. Should stretch and move well enough. And, and we're done. Thanks for watching.